Hello there, world of tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, the Droodles Blitz, and in today's video, I'll be playing in the Hori Type 2. This is a Tier 9 Japanese tech tree tank destroyer, a vehicle that is kind of like a Jagdpanzer E100 that was brought down a tier and just changed nations. I mean, just looking at the similarities between the two vehicles, they've got similar designs on the upper plate, the superstructure, and I actually kind of like that. This vehicle's armor is really, really solid and honestly pretty similar to how the Yags work. Its upper plate is really good. It's about, I would say, 500 millimeters thick. If you try to shoot anywhere on the angled upper plate on flat ground, you're never going to pen. I've, in fact, had a lot of moments even aiming down on the upper plate like this and still bouncing it because it is such a ridiculously thick plate. So when you're aiming at the Hori Type 2, essentially just don't even bother shooting at the upper plate. Either go for the lower plate or go for the superstructure, which is the little flat panels next to the gun. Now, those flat panels are definitely the weakest part I would usually shoot at on the tank. It's about 250 thick. And granted, the lower plate is a weak spot, but you'll notice it's also got an angled lower bit underneath the lower plate, which is also very troll and hard to hit. So if you shoot at that lower plate and you miss, you're always going to bounce. If you shoot at the superstructure, it's kind of hard to miss. It's just a big old flat box. Now, the cool things about this tank is that it's got eight degrees of gun depression. It's very rare for tank destroyers to be pretty flexible, but this tank has some flexibility with that gun depression. It's also got one of the better guns for a tier nine tank destroyer, sitting at 2,850 DPM. Really solid pen at 290 on the standard, 340 on the premium and its average damage is 560 and the premium only goes down to 545 so essentially you can fire premium rounds all day and only lose minimal damage that barely is going to make a difference in the battlefield dispersion's good aiming time is a bit mediocre but it's still plenty aiming time to get the job done overall the tank is a really unique vehicle when it comes to mobility it's definitely not the fastest only going at a top speed of 37 with a pretty poor power to weight but it does reverse at 15, which is nice, so I'll give it that. It doesn't really need top speed, though, because after all, you are a tank destroyer. So the majority of the game, you're not going to necessarily sit directly in the front line. You're going to stay, like, midline is what I like to do in this vehicle. So the enemy team has an AMX 50B, a 57 Emmy, and an M103, plus a T124 and an Object 263. They are all somewhat heavy vehicles that we might expect to see going this side. I mean, the lineup's not really fair. We have a lot more heavies than they do, and all of ours are pretty solid as well. So I guess we'll see how this battle does turn out. I'm going to cross all the way down here. You can see the tank's not super slow, as I was saying before. It definitely can get up to a speed that is not bad at all. So we got a nice shot into the T-57 Heavy already, and that's a 524 slap into his vehicle. He's going to try and dump his clip. And while he's doing that, I'm just going to poke him again. And boom, there you go, another slap. Two big rolls that were low rolls, I should point out. But even with that, we're still getting out fine damage. We got the Waffentreiger off to the back. Get a nice slap into his vehicle for 300. And let's back up. Now, the 263 does pen me, but it's fine. We only lost 400 health. It's not the end of the world. We're going to reload again. And uh, let's see. Oh, 263. Oh, okay, game. Okay, that's um interesting. I have nothing else to say. A 263 is able to poke me and get away with it in the flat open. Ah. Well, um, not really sure what to say about that one. I'd love to clear this 57 heavy, but uh, I, I don't know if I want to bleed the health for it right now. Um, so I'm just going to back on up. There you go. Nice shot into the 50B. Able to just squeeze it into the side of his tank. With that, we're up to 2,000 damage, which is not too bad at all. Let's reload again. It looks like that Sheridan is tunneling me. Um, so I'm a little cautious about that. Let's aim it on the Sheridan, and what are you going to do? Bonk! There you go. I thought the Sheridan was going to YOLO me. It really looks like that guy had his eyes on me, but maybe not, because the Sheridan's no longer, um, no longer really healthy at all. Alright, well, we got the 2 and 24 off to the side. We got the 263 over here, and I can clear this 263 as long as my teammate, yes, gives me the leeway. Alright, long live the enemy 263. That AMX 50B just lost about all of his health in half a second there. Um, let's just, I uh, would shoot the 50B, but I think it'd be a smarter decision to clear that enemy M103, which we did. And all that's left is the enemy 50B right here, who, he might kill me, but... I'm not really worried. I think he's out of his shells anyway, so... No! <laughs> I couldn't get around that corner. A bit unfortunate there. But we still did fine. And this is kind of what the Hori plays like. I mean, the only tank that really even hurt us this battle 
was that 263, and it's kind of sad that we weren't able to pen him with a pretty easy shot, in my opinion. But either way, we still did 3,500 damage, we helped out our team a bit, and we were able to sit frontline in a tier 10 battle, getting the job done. The gun is just really solid. I mean, a lot of people don't like the fact that it's kind of derpy if you don't fully aim in, but... It does have a lot of alpha, so I kind of expect it to be like that. For example, the T-30's gun is also really, really derpy. So, I would expect this take to kind of be a little inaccurate, too, if you're just trying to snap shells. Enemy line up this battle. Speaking of the devil, they have a T-30. They also have an M103. Progetto 46. They got a lot of tank destroyers, actually. So, I'm going to have to be a bit careful about that. But we're going to make our way over towards base C. This is bad, though, because three of our heavies are going towards A. I don't know why people like to do that. It's really just a disaster when you send your heavies over towards A side. It's like they all cognitively agree. Yes, let's all go to the wrong side of the map at once. That'll go well. Um, yeah, you guys have fun over there. Thankfully, I'm in a tier 9, and this is a tier 8 battle. So at least I have the advantage of uh, not being stuck alone here. But let's push up. Let's see if we can maybe get a shell or something into somebody that goes off to this side. Hello. Is anybody here? Well, we got the, uh, the scepter, and that's a pretty big old bonker to that scepter. 530 damage. That's kind of what the Hori, once again, is pretty good at. You can see we got a nice bounce because this tank has solid armor against tier 9s and 8s. And, uh, let's see, we got the Progetto over here. I don't see, oh, no, the T-30 is spotted. That's absolutely perfect because with the T-30 spotted, it means I got a lot less to worry about on this side of the map. So, we got the Semo Vente. Ah! That made a lot of sense, Wargaming. I mean, thankfully, we got to bounce ourselves, so it kind of made up for it, but uh, still, I'm really confused on how that even remotely bounced. Well, let's load it in a premium shell, get a nice 607 slap into that uh, Semovente, and this guy is going to be cleared. Bonk, there you go. Not too bad. Oh, I'm lagging, but we're going to turn around and go this way. I think this is a smarter decision because we can already see what the enemy team's doing, so I'm going to use the... Not so great mobility to try and make it as fast as I can over towards this side of the map. Got the IS-2 over here. Bonk. There you go. Nice 509 into the M103. Let's back up so we're not the one taking the shot. All right. Not too bad. And uh, now we just reload. Now, I'm not sure if the IS is going to pen this guy, but he didn't. Thankfully, you got me. And we get a nice slap a rooney into that player. Already, we're doing pretty okay. That T-30 somehow managed to bounce my teammate there, which is... Honestly, pretty impressive. We got the Progetto off to the side, and uh, I kind of want to slap that Progetto, but I don't think I can. Hmm. Well, it's a weird game that's taking place here. The T-30 just finished off my teammate. We got the Borsig. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off towards this side. I'm going to see if I can get a, a slap into the T-30, which I did. There you go. And once again, you can see that upper plate gets me a bounce. As I keep saying... The upper plate on this vehicle is very, very underrated. It's a lot better than you would think. And because of that, it has the ability to get a lot of bounces. Now, unfortunately, we did get slapped by that Borsig for a pretty, pretty hefty chunk. But what we're going to do now, because I know that this Borsig is probably going to kill me, is we're just going to pull forwards and get a nice slap into that guy and keep on driving over here. And that Borsig is actually tunneling the T-49 rather than me because he wants to get that HE out, which means I'm actually able to just turn around. So... That actually just gave me the opportunity to get some vengeance into this guy. Oh boy, my T-49 pushes him away. Mm. Teammates! Well, we still got the slap out. There you go. Um, so we are still in a winning situation. That Borsig definitely could have done a lot better if he had shot me rather than the, uh, the rest of the guys. But let's see if we can get a shell into that prog maybe. Hmm. Come on. What are you going to do, prog? This guy's got a lot of decisions to make. It looks like the one he's making, though, is to run. I don't know if that hit him. I am not sure at all, but I'm kind of hoping it did. Well, obviously, I'm hoping that it did. Um, I'm going to drive over this side of the map, and we're going to see if we can cut off this Progetto. Uh, we are not super high on base cap right now, so this isn't looking amazing. Oh, there's the, there's the prog. Okay, well, maybe we can hit him right here. Nope, he's on the other side of the map. Oh, nice! Okay, okay, I mean, this is a possible win. I'm just really hoping that our team gets there. Come on, 49! Yeah, this is gonna be a win. Ooh, ah, that was sad, but we're still gonna win this. And dead. Okay. 
I definitely could have captured base C. It might have been a smarter decision, but I wasn't too worried because we had our 49 that was full health. So uh, not a bad game at all. Once again, we did 3,000 plus damage, almost 4K this battle, dealing 39.45. We blocked 2,200, and we were able to easily dominate this battle in a tier 9 tank. It's just a great showcase of the Hori Type 2. I really like this tank. I think it's a bit underrated. You never see this vehicle rolling around, yet it really is just kind of a Yag Panzer, as you saw how I played it at tier 9. So I like this tank a lot. Hopefully you guys like it just as much, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!